Hello, what is up guys? Evil Do Asarm here today, back with another Black Desert video. Just kidding, we're gonna learn how to use Excel today, baby. A couple weeks ago, Eurosa asked me to make a video on how to use the API system to create your very own spreadsheet that allows you to query different marketplace values and whatnot to make any sort of spreadsheet you want to do like profit calculations, just look up general items on the marketplace, do comparisons or anything you can think of that you'd want to use the prices in game for. So in this video, we'll take a look at how to pull these prices and we're going to make a super simple calculator that's going to teach you pretty much every function you need to know. That's going to let you select both vinegar and essence of liquor from a little calculator up here, populate a table with the values of those products and show you your total profit from making any number of these. So like if I made 5,000 essence of liquors, I'd make 6.4 million silver right now. So all of this is automatically calculating in real time. I'm going to show you how to do it and how to query this stuff from the amazing Warflash API. This thing is like amazing. And by the end of it, hopefully you know some cool new tricks with Excel that you can use to impress your boss or show off on your next big collegiate project. So quickly before we get into the video, if you're new to my channel, new to Black Desert, or you've been watching the videos on the channel and still have not subscribed yet, please consider it. it helps to grow my channel. You'll stay up to date when new content like this comes out, and I would greatly appreciate it. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. And let's start off with going to the Google Sheets website right here. This is Google Sheets. If you've never used it before, you need a Google account. It's the same as your YouTube account. So just go ahead and log into this and go to your Google Sheets page linked in the description below. You then click blank up at the top when it pops up here. And this will bring you up a new untitled spreadsheet. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will name this sheet YouTube API Tutorial. And the first thing that you need to do to this spreadsheet is copy in the Market API spreadsheet. So this is also linked in the description below. And all you have to do for this, it's super simple, is go to the bottom left corner down here where you see the option that says prices. If you right click this option, you will see an option that says copy to existing spreadsheet. Search through your pile here until you find the one you're looking for. It's YouTube API tutorial. Hit the select button. It'll copy the sheet and it'll be a okay and ready to go. If you then go over to the YouTube API tutorial page right here, you will see a blank spreadsheet as well as a copy of the API spreadsheet here. Moving on to the sheet that we just made a copy of over here, we're going to need to make one addition to this sheet, and it's going to be a value pack yes or no filter. So to do this, just go ahead and type in value pack, that I spelled wrong, of course, value pack, and we need to make a drop down menu here that says either yes or no. To do that, we're going to scroll over to the right side of the spreadsheet, and we're going to make a really, really simple table. So yes, no, and then we need 0 0.85 and 0 0.65. So these two values are roughly the multipliers if you have a value pack active or not. 15% tax versus 35% tax is all we're doing right there. If we head over to the value pack cell that we just created right here and right click on this option, all the way at the bottom of the table that pops up, you will see the option for data validation. If you go ahead and click on that, click on this little plus here of this middle series of box, enter a range of formula, click on this little cross area right here. It's gonna let you select the cells for your drop down menu. Our drop down menu is going to be Yes or no, these two cells right over here. Hit enter, hit save. And now if you scroll over to this option here, we have a drop down menu that says yes or no. Pretty darn cool. Also should point out on this spreadsheet, you have drop downs for all of the different regions in the game, as well as all of the different languages available to you. So I do play on the NA region of the game and I do speak English US here. So that's what we're gonna go for. You'll have to adjust the names that you use in the little sheet that we're gonna continue to make here if you pick a different language but everything else should be exactly the same. Anyway, now we need to get that 0.85 or that 0.65 multiplier set up over here. So this is gonna involve the VLOOKUP formula. This is a pretty complex formula when you're first getting started in Excel, but once you know how to use it, it's like fantastic. It works in Excel, works in Google Sheets, so you can use it at work, you can use it at school, it's really, really fantastic. Anyway, to go ahead and use this one, what we wanna do is equal sign VLOOKUP, open parenthesis, the first entry in this formula is what you want to look up. So what we want to look up is yes or no. So whatever's inside of this drop down menu, we want to look that value up. The next thing you need to do is select where you want to look for it. And in this case, we're going to look for it over here in this tiny little table that we built. So we're looking for yes or no in this table, as well as the value that is associated with yes or no. The next thing you need to do is enter another comma and select which column you want to look inside of. So in this case, we want to look for the second column. We're looking for column one, column two. So column two is what we're looking for. And the final entry is just going to be false. Don't worry about it. It works. If you go ahead and hit the enter key on the keyboard, it is going to return the value for yes right here. So 0.85 
If we go ahead and select no from the dropdown, it changes to 0.65. Congratulations, you've just basically done everything you're gonna need to do to make one of these spreadsheets. So if we go ahead and move on to sheet one, which we created originally when we made this first spreadsheet itself, you'll be entered into a blank spreadsheet to work with. From here, we're just gonna create the basics of a calculator. So we're gonna have our recipe selection. We're gonna put our total number of cooks that we plan to do or crafts or whatever word you wanna use there. I'm bad with English most of the time. And our average number of procs. So these two are user-defined values. The average number sits somewhere around 2.5 for most crafts. However, as you improve your mastery and whatnot, you'll increase this value. And for the purpose of the calculator, just for testing, we're gonna go ahead and put 100 total cooks in. So we're gonna make 100 of whatever recipe we decide to do. The next thing we're gonna do is create our table that auto-populates based on the recipe that we pick. So the left column is going to be item, and the right column is going to be price. So we'll fill in the different items that go into the recipe right here. The maximum number of items that can be in a recipe is five, so we'll enter down five blanks right now just to save some space. I'm a big fan of like subtotal lines. You can do this entirely on your own if you want or not, but I'm gonna put a border along the bottom for a subtotal. This one's gonna be the total per craft, and we'll leave it at that for now. The next thing we need to do is put in the two recipes for the essence of liquor as well as the vinegar. So let's go ahead and do the first option, which is gonna be vinegar. We're then gonna create a second offset column over here called vinegar price. We'll then do the same thing right here with essence of liquor and essence of liquor price. So I popped open BDO Day with both of the recipes right here just to copy paste them into the spreadsheet. So the recipe for vinegar is one fruit, one leavening agent, one grain, and one sugar. So on the vinegar row right here, we're gonna go ahead and put in that recipe. So the cheapest fruit in the game is always gonna be strawberry. So we're actually gonna automatically default to this one for that. And strawberries always cost 700 silver. So long as you're buying them from a fruit vendor right here like Milano Bellucci, if you check her shop, she has them available for 700 silver. Essence of Liquor also has the same exact price, so we can just highlight those cells, copy and paste, drip drop it on down for that recipe. The next item in vinegar is grain, and the next item in Essence of Liquor is flour. So we're gonna go ahead and type in grain right here and flour right here. So essence of liquor, flour, vinegar is grain. There are multiple different grains and flours that you can use in recipes here. There's a lot of different options. So we're gonna come back to this one. But the next two options are easy. We have leavening agent and sugar for vinegar, which is both 20 silver from vendors and essence of liquor only has leavening agent. And that's it, both recipes are now in this. So the next thing we need to do is figure out which valued grain is the cheapest at any given time on the central marketplace. To do that, we're gonna make another table over here. So there are five types of grain and flour that we can use. We have wheat, barley, potato, sweet potato, and corn. So we have the grain option and we have the flour option for each of these. I'm also going to copy this little table right here and move it to the right side of the table as well. You'll see here why in a second. So now we're going to go ahead and use the VLOOKUP function to pull the price for each of these different types of grain. So just like we used it before, we're going to enter the equal key on the keyboard, VLOOKUP, open parenthesis, we are looking for wheat in the table of all prices. So the all prices table is located in this copy of prices sheet that we made at the very start of the video. And in the first copy of prices sheet here, if we select the A column and click and drag all the way over to the F column, this is gonna be the range that we're looking for the item entry of wheat. We can then press the comma key again on the keyboard. We are looking for the fifth column, which is the price. So one, two, three, four, five, column E. So we type the number five into the thing. And once again, just enter false to complete the table. This is gonna pull up the price for wheat. If you double click this little box down here, it'll automatically fill in the price for the rest of the items right here. So these are the values for each of the different items. We're then gonna do the exact same thing for flour right now. So if we go to the flour tab and hit equals V lookup, we're gonna pull the price for each of those flowers. To do this though, we're gonna use another function concatenate. So C-O-N-C-A-T-E-N-A-T-E, -E -E, concatenate, open parenthesis once again. What this is gonna do is combine the word wheat with flour. So to do this, we'll click on wheat, we'll then enter the comma key. We're then gonna hit the quotation mark key, space bar, quotation mark key. So this is gonna insert a space between wheat, comma, 
and flour. So this is going to do wheat space flour. We also never want this term flour to change as we continue to fill in the lines below. So we're going to throw two dollar signs in front of this U2 category right here. It could be different on yours depending on where you're creating this table. Um, basically all you want to do is make sure that this option for flour is never going to change, which as you can see on mine is in U2. After you've got that entered, we're going to head and close that parenthesis, and that is going to combine this first term in the VLOOKUP into wheat flour. So what this is going to do is it's going to look up wheat flour in, so we put the comma, in the table that we created earlier from the API sheet, A through F for this. Once again, same exact thing we just did. Comma, looking for column 5 because column 5 has the price. Comma, false. Close parenthesis. And that now pulled up the price of wheat flour. If we double click the little option down here, it'll auto fill in the price for each of the different flowers. And if you don't believe me that these are the prices for the different flowers in the game, if we hop on over into Black Desert right now and just look up like wheat flour, you can see that it's sitting at 1800 silver for its base price. And on our spreadsheet, it's at 1800 silver, barley flour, 1740, barley flour, 1740, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now that we have the value for each of the grains and flowers, what we want to do is get the minimum value because we want to use the cheapest possible one available. For this, we're going to go to our grain entry here for the vinegar option, and we're going to type in equals min, which is going to give us the minimum value of the grains. So just highlight that group. So this is always going to pick the cheapest price for grain. Do the exact same thing for flour equals min. Select the option of flour that we're looking for here. So this section right here, enter. The next thing we're going to do is figure out which text goes with which price. So to do that for the vinegar example, what we're going to do is click on the column that's previously labeled grain right here, or the cell previously labeled grain, hit the equal key, write VLOOKUP, open parenthesis, we are looking for this 1410 value in the clustering of cells located right here. So these prices plus this option and label over here to the right, comma key, Looking for column three, which is the wheat, barley, potato, sweet potato, and corn column, comma key, false. And that's going to return the actual grain that we're going to be using. Those of you that are wizards with Excel and Google Sheets are going to know that if this price is the same as any one of the prices over here, this is going to break. This is just to show you how to do it. If you really want it to be perfect, you'd have to create a little space here. Move this over and put another row of the wheat flour options here. So all of these different options right here. And not only pull from this table, but I'm just trying to show you how to do this easily. Anyway, we're going to do the exact same thing for flour. So this is going to be equals, except we're going to concatenate off of the bat. So once again, we're going to combine the terms with concatenate. The first term is going to be that same lookup. So V lookup, open parenthesis. We are looking for the 1740 value located in this little table right here. So we're looking for 1740 in the flour table. We're then going to pull the second column's word. So if it's 1740, we want to pull barley. So we're looking for column number two. And then once again, we close with false. Then we need to put a comma key because we're doing a concatenate right here. Quotation mark space, quotation mark to insert a space. Comma key, quotation mark, flower. So what this is going to do, as you can see, the little preview is telling us is it's going to take barley from this VLOOKUP section. So it's going to pull barley from this table insert a space, and then add the term flour to the end. So that creates barley flour as our value right here. Close the parentheses and click the enter key, and it now changes that to barley flour. So now we have our table put together here. The final thing we need to do is build our calculator. And this is going to be really, really quite simple. Just like we did before, we're going to go to the cell that's to the right of recipe, click on the option that says data validation, select with this little plus button and pick from this section right here. It doesn't particularly matter how far you scroll down. If you have multiple recipes you want to put into this calculator, all you got to do is make more space and more entries just like this to the side over here. Click the OK option, hit save, and you'll have the drop down for vinegar or essence of liquor. Next thing we need to do is put in the items. And for this one, we're going to use VLOOKUP once again. I told you we we're going to use this one a lot. We want to look up whatever's inside of this recipe selector. We want to find terms that are located within this section of text right here that we've just built this table for. In the case of the first entry, it's located in column number three. So the first column is the vinegar, second column is a blank, third column is strawberry. So we want to pull the third entry. As you can see, it's already telling us it's going to be strawberry, and we just put false in for the final term. So that pulled in strawberry. Now we need to edit this formula really, really quickly here. 
we always want to pull from D4 no matter what. So we're going to put a dollar sign in front of D and a dollar sign in front of 4. Same thing goes for our range. It's always going to be K3 to P7. So we put dollar signs in front of all of that as well. That's never going to change. If we then click and drag this down, you'll see that we pulled strawberry every single time. We don't want to do that. So we're going to change this to number 4 for this one. We'll change this to number 5 for this one. And we'll change this to number 6 for this one. And number 7 for the final one. So what this is going to do is pull the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th if you have a recipe that has multiple items beyond the first 4. Now this recipe only has 3 entries, so we can fix these errors by going to the front of our formula here and typing in if error, open parenthesis, comma at the end of it, double quotation mark to leave a blank cell. Close it with a close parenthesis and it'll now leave a blank. Easy. If we switch the recipe that we're using right here from essence of liquor to vinegar, you can see that it automatically updated the table here with the different recipe entries. Pretty cool. So now that we have this little section sorted, we just need to pull the price in to complete this. And this is actually another super simple thing. We can get a head start by control C, control V, copying in this original equation that we created. First thing we need to adjust on this is the range that's being pulled from. Since we're looking for the prices, we're gonna switch to this column. So we no longer need K. So to get rid of K, all we gotta do is hop back over to this little equation, change the K right here to an L. As you can see, it's adjusted the range so that we're only pulling from this section of the table, which is all we wanna pull from. The next change that we need to make is what we're actually looking up. So right now we're just looking up for vinegar. What we wanna do is turn that vinegar into a vinegar price, just like we've done before. So to do that, we're gonna use the concatenate function. Parenthesis, we're gonna keep that D dollar, four dollar sign there. Comma key, quotation mark, space, quotation mark to put a space, comma key, quotation mark, price, quotation mark, close. So what this is doing is it's saying we're gonna take D dollar, four dollar right here, put a space in there and add price to the end of it. The final change that we need to make is that this three needs to turn into a two because we're only looking to pull from the second column, not the third column. So go ahead and enter on that. Control C, Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V. Change these to the actual entries that they correspond to. So three, change this one to four, change this one to five, and change this one to six. Once again, we've got this reference error down here that we can get rid of if we type in if error to the front, close parenthesis, comma, quotation, quotation, close parenthesis. So that gets rid of that error. If we go ahead and switch to Essence of Liquor, you can see that it updates the recipe, updates the recipe, and we are good to go. The only thing that's left to do is add up the total value. So we just do equal sum, value of everything in this price column right here. And you can see the value of whatever you're trying to make, how much it's gonna cost you by thumbing through the two different options right there. So now all that's left is some pretty like boring basic math. So we have our total per craft. Now we're just gonna multiply by how many crafts we're doing. So that's going to be this number. So equal sign the total per craft times the total number of crafts that we're doing, 100. Enter. Pretty boring and straightforward. Next thing we need to do is find out how much whatever we're making is worth. So just like we've been doing before, it's going to be a V lookup. Open parenthesis. We are looking for the vinegar item inside of the table of prices. So we just highlight the table of prices. Comma key. Looking for the fifth column. Comma key. False. So that is the value of what we have made. Now that doesn't include the tax. So if we want to account for the tax, if we open the equation here back up, throw a little asterisk sign here for multiply, go back to our copy of prices page, we can select this cell right here, which is the value pack multiplier, and then just hit the enter key. And now it shows you the value of the item after the value pack tax has been removed. If we go back to copy prices here and change so that we don't have a value pack on, head back over to the sheet, you can see the price has changed to if you didn't have a value pack when you sold. So pretty neat little function built right into our calculator. Then all we gotta do is multiply that number by the number of crafts once again. So equals this number times the 100 that we already made. And then we also have to multiply by our average number of procs per cook, which in this case is 2.5. Then all that's left to do is calculate your profit. So if you just go ahead and type in profit right here, equals our sale minus our cost. 40,750 silver is gone. We can go to the 
format option at the top, number, number, just to see an actual physical number if it makes it easier for you to see. But you can see that this craft lost 40,000 silver, making 100 total crafts. This actually isn't accurate because you have to count in witches' delicacies and proc rates and all that stuff, which I'm just going to spitfire you some numbers real, real quick at this one. It's 2.36% chance for a proc on a witch's delicacy. So if we take our total number of cooks, multiply by 0 0.0236, we'll get the total number of possible witch's delicacies. Witch's delicacies are worth 12 milk each. So we can use VLOOKUP, quotation mark, milk, quotation mark, inside of the copy of prices tab looking in column number five looking for false enter we'll get the value of milk once again like i just said if we take on this and multiply by 12 because each witch's delicacy is worth 12 multiplied by this 2.36 number right here we'll get the total value of milk from our sales as well right here we can then go to the same formula once again and multiply by that cell over here that is the marketplace tax so this value pack tax number right here once again hit enter to see the value of this after tax. And then we'll have a real profit number, which is equal to this number plus this negative number right here. And we can see that we made 202,000 silver actually off of this little crafting series. But once again, this is RNG. This is what it averages out to over the course of lots and lots and lots of crafts. But that's it. You have a basic calculator working right here that you can use to quickly see the value of different profits and cookings and all that stuff that you do. If you wanted to add another entry into this calculator on your own, right? It's super, super simple. All you do is got to change the ranges that you're looking at. So let's just say I wanted to add one for pie and I wanted to make the recipe for this one like crust filling just to be like super, super simple. Say the crust costs 50 and this costs 100, right? Just throwing crap numbers out there. All we have to do is you can see that it's already filled into our data validation, but if it isn't in there, you go back to that same data validation, click on your selection range here, delete this and reselect a new range. Okay, cool, save, and now it would be inside of there. You then need to change the range that we're looking for inside of this table. So you can see right now it's running from K3 to P7. All you got to do is extend the range that that's running. So we want to run it in this case down to P10, and you can see now that it fills in the whole table. Straightforward. Same thing right down the line. You just have to fix that K7 to P whatever. So just change those all to P10, P10, P10. Change this over here to P10, 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 and P10. And then if I select pi from the menu right here, it would fill it in if I wasn't stupid and forgot to put pi price right here, which now that I have it should automatically fill in the pricing right there, just like it has. So you can easily add whatever you want to this. And if pi was a real item in the game, the actual values would be popping up and you'd be able to see your profit and loss for any crafting that you want to do as far as cooking goes. So this was a super simple example. You can do this with any amount of data that you can collect from this table. If you want to know how many things are traded on any given day, plot that data, it's here for you. Prices, changing in prices, anything that you want to do with this type of data, you can do. This video is a long video though, and I am about to wrap it up. So I do hope it's going to help you here in Black Desert or just in life in general to have learned how to use these functions. If this video is going to help you, do let me know in the comment section below. Also, once again, if you're not subscribed already, please consider it. Help subscribe my channel, pushing for 100k, and would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you the next live stream over on Twitch, the next YouTube video right here, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.